everyone, happy new year. I am pre-filming this, so I'm still in 2020. 2020 has been a uh, very uh, interesting year. So anyway, the, the point here is I decided for the first um, illustration of the year to do a girl illustration but not just one. Um, I want to put some meaning into it. Um, so I know some of you have been asking me to do some sort of like face illustrations for the Christmas and stuff, but it's just, it was such a busy time and I had so much to work with that I just didn't get around it. So I thought I kind of combine um, all of the ideas together and bring it out here today. So I have been doing these illustrations on my Instagram and I quite like them. They're very much stylized and they um, have this very small mouth. Um, so the lips that I usually paint are quite big and this changes the face proportion and the look. Also the eye being quite tilted, it makes it um, a different, you know, mood type of thing. So what I thought I'll do today is I'll do uh, like this would be the head illustration type of a thing. I want it to be quite big and then the, the body to be sort of smallish. And for the body, I want to illustrate a Mexican traditional dress, which I believe is called the Tejuana, which is this um, like a skirt, which is long and it's sort of wide at the bottom and sometimes they use starch to make the fabric kind of stand a little bit um, with more structure and it has typically a lot of color and a lot of patterns which is fabulous if you want to do some colorful doodling. So the dress is typically worn with a top which is called huipil, huipil I think, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that one and it's just like a square shaped or rectangular um, top like it's a very basic shape to it now Frida Kahlo made this um, this sort of fashion um, iconic uh, she was the one that sort of was using it to hide um, some of her physical um, problems and um, at the same time she looked very feminine and pretty and and beautiful now this dress is associated with um, strong character and um, I think it sort of represents women being um, independent and powerful so I thought what a great way to start the year um, with some optimism <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the face illustration. For my pen, I'm using today this Muji 0.35. It sort of acts in a funny way where it's not too water soluble, so it doesn't sort of um, move too much, but it does move in certain, like with certain mediums more than others are found, or certain colors. I don't know what it is about it, but um, I like the, the sort of thin end to it. Okay, so the face, I want to be about this this big here, together with the hair, so I'll start round about here, giving the girl a nice pointy jawline. Um, so the eyebrows... Uh, would be about here and then typically I don't do a nose but I started sort of paint them, painting them a little bit and then a little bit of a lip here with a beauty spot and then the eyes I like them to be a little bit tilted for sort of the style purpose and she'll be looking that way and then maybe I'll try to give her Frida Kahlo um, type of a Hairline here. So 
So what I'm trying to do is just sort of section the hair a little bit to make it look like a plait, but it doesn't really matter. You know, you don't have to go into the sort of precision of things. Um, and that is it for the face illustration. I think I'm going to give her a very thin neck and then go into like a top. Just like that. And then from here, we're going to create a skirt. And then just sort of little feet like that. If you're not good at drawing feet or arms, this sort of illustration is perfect, I find. Because you just hide <laughs> the arms somewhere or not, you can bring them out um, in front of the dress. Um, you know, it just doesn't have to be too precise. This is going to be all about colors and things like that. So I think I am quite happy with this. I'm not going to create a Frida earring, um, like big statement earrings, just I want it to be nice and simple. And then the main part will be the fun element with the illustration. <clears throat> so for the hair, I quite like this um, hematite violet genuine. So I'm just going to, yeah, it's still separating. Mine is being a bit wacky. Um, I need to go get a toothpick and mix it in because um, I was doing a video on Instagram and this is how much of the gamma ray came out and you can see basically this was a you know a full tube which has now big dent and I worry that it will change the formula of the paint so I'm just gonna go do that okay so I've just managed to get some mixing in the tube done but I have to say because I lost so much um, of the gamma rabbit, I wonder what that's going to cause it to be like quite gloopy, which is what it is at the minute. It's um, quite hard to work with. So anyway, I'm just going to try adding a little bit of it. Like so, and then just using some water. And hopefully we'll still see the doodling underneath like that. It's a very interesting color but I think I had bad luck with my tube. It separates beautifully and it makes beautiful hair um, color because you don't need to do anything with it. It sort of gives you that um, tonal difference that you like, that you would like in hair, so without sort of having it look flat and without needing to do much to it, you just use one color, it does its job, it does the separation, you can help it a little like that, and that's it, and just so pretty. Okay, I think that should be about it. And now let's have a look. For the face, I actually quite like it as it is, but I just realized I'm going to use my Waterman ink, which I loaded in this pan here. And it works so beautifully, like, I haven't used it in a, while, in a while and I realize that I'm missing it. It's beautiful with illustrations. I'll show you why. So I'm just going to emphasize where I want that ink to flow a little. So 
I'm just going to create slightly thicker lines. Uh, just a little bit under the nose and maybe a bit here on the ear and on the side like so. So what I'm going to do now, introduce some water and you'll see what happens now. This ink separates all kind of has this sort of beautiful bluey milky way um, of moving with the color. It's just beautiful. Again, a lazy way of working where you don't need to think about it much. Let me just zoom you in a little so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so you can see how easy that was. And then I'm just going to do a bit of that on the side of the face, just for some extra bit of shadowing, not too much. A thin line here. There we go. And that's it. So this line, or this kind of original ink from the pan actually is holding up quite well because I already put some water over here and here and basically uh, it was this pan that made me buy it so it's the Muji 025 which I absolutely love it's got the finest points it's even thinner than the than this one and it is however I heard uh, been discontinued so I was like in shock horror went and bought a whole pack of these but that the original one this one 025 that was water soluble like it just wouldn't hold up any uh, water at all whereas this one seems to be doing a fairly good job look at that it hasn't feathered at all um, if you would go over with the brush and start sort of moving out a little bit and then it kind of would but it works beautifully otherwise okay so in terms of her lip I think I'm gonna go for this color here which I mixed up earlier I think I'm still I still need to show you this mix and then I'm going to show you a little trick I have been doing which is just taking my finger and dubbing it into the cheek which kind of makes that perfect perfect circle kind of just blend out a little and then you have this little dot of the color left there um, I started doing it here and it just worked so beautifully this is on the Tomoe River paper sorry I I have the autofocus off. Okay, so that's as much for the face. I think she looks nice and stylized. Now what I'm gonna do is just doodle different shapes um, on her top. Your angel eyes tell me not to doubt But another story's going round all over town Cause you think I'm blind or maybe that I'm down But in the end you know what a ghost will come around mm -mm. We could have been doing just great But you throw a good thing away We're up Wanting me to love you You're so out of line And what am I to tell you But you're out of time Ain't got no illusion We should
Okay, so I have gone ahead, finished the doodling, and I think now uh, we kind of can think of bright colors and mm -mm -mm. there are a few colors that I really think would work with this. And it's these three colors. So it's Dallaroni, although I want to use watercolors today. So I'm going to try and find something similar. Um, actually, okay, so I quite like the Schminke Cobalt Turquoise, so I'm going to go into that color and. I'll probably use it in this line. So for this part, you'll need a fine tip brush. I'm using the Round 4 Princeton Neptune. I find that it holds a great amount of water for me to be able to do detail, yet have enough watercolour to work with. Because sometimes you go for a smaller brush and it really does not hold any water so you end up running out of it out of the color very quickly okay so that's this i'll repeat the same color in the skirt so i'll go i'll probably go here again like so, so I find if you give this ink a little bit extra time to dry, then it moves even less like the um, the pan here that I used. So I'm just dubbing on a bit more color for that extra vibrancy there. And now I think I quite like this pink here, which is a Shinhan purple gray, it's called. It's lovely, it's got a similar nature to the cobalt color in terms of it's um, like opacity. Now you can make it as opaque or as watered out as you wish, but I think because the pattern is so bold here, I want it to be really colorful. So I'm going for full opacity. And again, I'm going to repeat this color, probably at the bottom of the skirt, as it's a similar um, pattern. I guess you can see that the next color that would work really beautifully here is a yellow. Have a look at these dresses, the Tehuana the dresses. Um, Google a few images and you'll find that there is a lovely, lovely pattern you can be inspired by and color palette. They're very bright, very colorful, which I think nice punch of color always puts you in a good mood. And that's what I love about Mexico. It's so bright and it's so hot and warm and happy. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've been to Mexico, but once uh, things hopefully go back to normal. Guess I heard it all, all the same, but go ahead and use me. I need it now. I need it now. All them pretty words always lame You're trying to entice me Not going down Not going down And you Trying to make a case Don't wait Cause you About to be erased Aced, 